Hey folks and welcome to another tutorial. So we're going to continue talking about the stack today but we're going to start moving into the C calling convention. As it is in uh, X64 there's been some pretty big changes since X32 so uh, let's go through those. Now first of all a calling convention is um, there's two parts to it. There's the caller which is the procedure that's calling the, the uh, sub procedure and there's also the callee which is the sub procedure being called. So both have certain uh, things that they've got to set up in order to make a calling convention work and uh, today we're going to go through exactly what the caller has to do. So this is mostly going to be um, exactly what the uh, C++ compiler thinks X turn C means. When we type X turn C at the start of our function prototype um, the C++ compiler says okay he's going to um, expect that I do exactly this and uh, later on this will lead to exactly how the stack looks when we get the um, call to our sub procedure written in assembly. I want to mention that calling conventions aren't actually part of assembly, this is part of the C++ compiler and uh, once you're in assembly it's better to do things as fast and as simply and quickly as possible but uh, just document whatever you're doing. Okay so this is going to lead to uh, passing more than four parameters to one of our sub procedures and it's also going to lead eventually to um, reserving space on the stack for local variables variables local to a procedure not inside this, the uh, data segment okay so what's going to happen first of all if we've got a function that looks something like this um, void func a b c and d just like that if we pretend that they're integers um, we know that they're going to be passed in uh, RCX, RDX, R8 and R9 so one of the first things that uh, the C++ compiler will transform this particular line into is um, of RCX actually they might be integers we'll say they're integers ECX A and we'll say MOV um, EDX what was the next one? B of R8 double word um, C and the last one will be mov R9 double word that's a 9 just there and D okay now that you know we, we shouldn't be we're not passing anything via the stack so that should be pretty much all that the caller has to do then they should just be able to say call func but that's not what happens um, what happens is um, shadow space is made on the stack for these four parameters. So each of these little, s I've drawn a stack over here with our stack pointed in the bottom. Each of these little boxes is eight bytes long and um, shadow space is made to hold each of these as if they were eight bytes. So this one's going to be reserved, this one's going to be reserved, this one and this one. Since um, yeah, usually we would have passed them from right to left via the stack, we would have pushed all of these so uh, this one here would have been A, this one would have been B, this one would have been C, this one would have been D but um, yeah we're passing via registers so shadow space is made instead okay that would move the stack pointer up to there, now that's pretty much what's going to happen um, the way that they make shadow space is uh, above these mobs you'll see um, sub RSP 28 which is um, make 32 bytes of shadow space 32 bytes of course is enough for um, all four of these parameters note that it's um, the shadow space is made 32 bytes even if we pass one so even if the only parameter we were passing was A um, this shadow space line here would be exactly the same it would still reserve 20 H. I don't know why, it's very wasteful but that's what happens so these wouldn't be here if we were only passing one parameter it would look something like that and uh, the caller of course after they've called the function since they uh, subtracted 32 bytes or 20 H from the uh, RSP, the stack pointer we've got to add it again which is um, D L O K 
shadow space. Okay, so that's a bit about shadow space. They say that um, they say that uh, the compiler makes shadow space because we're past um, A through ECX, but if in our procedure we want somewhere to uh, store ECX while we call another function, for example, um, yeah, that's what the shadow space is for. So this one is uh, just space in case we want to save ECX. I personally don't buy that. I think that's stupid. Um, and it's not difficult to push ECX if we want to save it. Anyway, I don't write the rules, so this is what we're going to do. Alrighty, that's if you're passing one, two, three, or four parameters. That's how it'll work. Just reserve the 20H of shadow space and then move them into ECX, EDX, e, oh, R9, sorry, and R8. If you're passing um, five or more, things change a little bit. So let's have a look. Okay, so we don't know how much shadow space is going to be anymore. Um, what actually happens is um, A, B, C, D, E, F. We'll pass six values. Let me clean up over here as well. Okay, this is what's going to happen. So initially our stack point is going to be down the bottom here. Um, we're going to make 32 bytes of shadow space for these eventually, but the first thing that we've got to do is push F and push E. So that'll sort of happen like this. Push F. You always push your parameters from uh, right to left, and you don't push your first four, because they're passed by stacks, by our, our register, sorry. So push F and push E. So this will look something like this, F and E, just like that, and then we say make our shadow space, as if uh, we passed these via the stack, even though we're not, so this is exactly the same as before really, just make uh, reserve four of these boxes, one, two, three, four, for shadow space. So this is shadow space, and yeah, then the function will be called. But uh, at the end here, it wasn't um, 32 bytes that we added to RSP, it was um, 48, because we pushed another two parameters. So however many parameters you're pushing, it's that multiplied by 8. That's the total amount that you've got to add to RSP just here. So um, what do we say? 48 sub RSP48. That's for um, six parameters. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now you might notice that um, we're putting F and E here into 64-bit um, boxes, even if they're not 64 bits. So if, for instance, um, say uh, F and E, maybe they're bytes, I want to say that they'll still occupy a 64-bit box. The 64-bit box in uh, the stack segment will look a bit like this. Uh, most of it will be free, but it'll have a little F or E over the side here in a byte, and the rest will just be garbage. It'll be whatever was in the stack segment before. So the only thing that'll change is the little F in the corner, and uh, all of this is just wasted. So the F would be sitting there, and the E would be sitting in its own up here with its own garbage. E over the side there. So even if your parameters aren't 64 bits, um, the stack is still going to put them on 64 bit aligned um, spots in RAM. Okay, so you might be sort of wondering how does it do that since um, push and pop only take 16 and uh, 64 bit operands. So how do we achieve something like push CL? And the answer is that, in actuality, um, nothing is pushed. What actually happens is this. Um, sub RSP48, then um, MOV RCX uh, A, MOV RDX um, B, 
B and the same with C and D we move those in as well so mold mold but these ones just here are moved slightly differently um, this one is done like this mold RSP plus 20 H E mold RSP plus 28 H F so we achieve the pushes, we achieve exactly this but um, we've sort of also achieved pushing byte values as well so if this happened to be a byte um, you know we've pushed it onto the stack uh, it does mean that it's very wasteful however because we've got a whole 64-bit value um, reserved for a single byte over the side but um, this is just the way that it works so uh, if you're looking to conserve stack space, uh, this in my opinion is a terrible calling convention, but um, it's probably pretty quick because the stack pointer remains 8 bit aligned, sorry, 8 byte aligned always. And uh, yeah, it's not bad. So if we're passing another parameter, so we're passing also uh, G, E, F, G, um, and a few things would change. For a start, it wouldn't be 48 up here, sub RSP, since um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times um, 8 isn't 48, it's 56. So instead of 48, we would um, reserve 56 bytes, which includes our um, shadow space as well as uh, these ones. And also, we wouldn't stop after we've moved um, E and F, we'd have to move G onto the stack as well. So our stack would look like this. And uh, G, of course, would be also on... Uh, oh, that's going to be 36 H. No. What am I doing? Oh, we're in hexadecimal. It's not 36 H, it's just 30. 38G. Okay, so yeah, you just keep adding to these. So this parameter just here is 30 away, and if there was another one, then uh, that one would be 38 away, then 40, then 48. So you just uh, either have the number or, or an 8 there as well. You just uh, count, count up in uh, multiples of 8 in hexadecimal to uh, push each of these parameters, or to effectively push these parameters, even if they're not. Um, 64 bits. Okay, so then we'd call the function, call um, func, and of course we'd have to add RSP and 56. Okay, and this is D alloc space. Okay, so does that make sense? I hope it does. It's it's a bit strange, but this is this is what the caller does. And uh, it pretty much comes down to um, you subtract 8 times however many parameters you pass, and then you move your uh, first 4 into their registers, where they're supposed to be, and then you start moving the uh, remaining ones, um, beginning from the E here, into... Um, 20H, then 28H, then 30H, then the next one will be 38H, then 40H, then 48H, etc, etc, etc. Then uh, you write to call your function when you've put all your parameters in there. And uh, finally you restore the stack pointer to what it was before you uh, allocated parameter space. Alrighty, so this, my friends, this right here is exactly what the stack would look like. Um, when we call this function, uh, yeah, that's what our assembly would get the stack. When we get our assembly procedure, this is how the stack's going to look. So next time we're going to talk about how you access these from an assembly procedure, and we're going to talk about um, making uh, local variables on the stack, and uh, yeah, just a few other things. We'll talk about the um, call E, pretty much, the call E side of the C calling convention. And I hope that wasn't too confusing, and thank you for listening. Yeah. Good day, folks. I just watched the um, previous tutorial and realised that uh, it needs a demonstration. So I've written a little C++ file just here, and beside it is a 
an assembly procedure as per usual, only this assembly procedure here calls one of the functions that I've written in my C++. So yeah, this introduces a few new things to us and uh, just shows us how to call C++ functions from assembly. So first of all, this is all normal. We've got our x turn C and then call a CPP procedure. This is my uh, function written in assembly. And this is the function just here that um, that procedure calls. So I'm passing six parameters here, ints A, B, C, D, E, and F. And just to prove that it's all working, uh, I thought it might be good to, or show that it's all working, I thought it might be good to um, print out these parameters. So I've just printed the last one here, F. And uh, do note that you've got to uh, declare these as X turn C in your C++ file. Otherwise, um, yeah, you won't be using the calling convention that we just went through, so your assembly will have to change. And uh, yeah, you call it X turn C even if it's not external to this file. It's going to be external to the assembly one. Okay, so this is all pretty normal. We just call a CPP procedure that just calls the assembly function. And over here on the assembly side, there's a couple of new things. First of all, there's this uh, X turn with no E. Maybe you can put an E as well. Let's have a look. Hey, presto, you can put an E in as well. X turn or X turn, either way. Then the name of the procedure that's external, then a colon and proc. Okay, that just tells Massim that there's an external procedure that um, you're referencing and it won't really be known until you know the whole thing's linked together so it just warns Massim that there's an external procedure and then in the actual procedure here that we've written and we call from C++ yeah pretty much what we went through in the tutorial so the first thing to do is uh, make a bit of space on the stack including shadow space and move the first four parameters into their registers that's um, A, B, C and D and the next thing is to move these other two parameters into RSP plus 20 and RSP plus 28. And those are going to be 5 and 6. I've just chosen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to be simple here. Then of course you call the procedure, which will jump the IP over to here. And finally, when you're all done, you store the stack again and return. So yeah, just a little demonstration of how you call a function written in C++ from assembly. And uh, now now we know how to call assembly from C++ and C++ from assembly, and I think that's pretty cool. Okay, thank you for listening. Adios.